Many of you have asked me what's the best way to learn how to make beats in FL Studio, and my response will always be learn your DAW to the fullest, and in that process, everything else will come together too. If you've played RPG games, you know that there are main missions and side missions. If you neglect one or the other, your character will be caught lacking somewhere in the game. Learning and developing a workflow in your DAW of choice is a main mission. The faster and smoother you can cross that bridge, the better you'll become. Anyways, after 10 years of crossing this FL Studio bridge, here are 10 workflow tips that will save you time, and make you a more efficient FL Studio user. Let's start with one trick that made many bros cry. As you can see, we have both MIDI and audio inside this project. The original tempo is 116, and let's say you want to change that to see how it sounds on different BPMs. In order for the audio to adapt to tempo changes without changing pitch, or time, you need to set the mode of the audio clip to stretch. Obviously doing it one by one is a pain in the ass, but thankfully all you have to do is to click on tools, macros, switch all audio clips to real time stretching. And now every audio is set to stretch mode. As you can hear, everything stayed in pitch and time. The second trick is about changing the key of your projects. As you can see in this project, I have more than 15, 16 patterns. And if I want to change the notes in one pattern, I have to go and do that one by one for each other pattern. However, again, there is a better solution. Using this panel inside the playlist, hold shift and select any pattern that has melodic elements in it. Because I lay down my drums inside the playlist and not inside patterns, every pattern that I have contains melodic elements. When you have them all selected, right click, transpose, and enter the number that you want to transpose in semitones. So if you want to go, let's say from D minor to E minor, that's plus two semitones. This project is in F minor. So if I want to go to D minor, that's minus three semitones. Then press enter. And now every MIDI note inside every pattern that you selected is transposed by minus three semitones. There is one problem though. This change doesn't happen to audio files. So I had a melody that sounded like this. And I consolidated this to an audio file. As you can hear, the MIDI patterns are transposed to D minor, but the audio file is still in F minor. So if you have audio samples that are playing melodies, you will need to go in and pitch them manually. But this section that doesn't have an audio will be in D minor. The third trick is for those of you who do a lot of the work inside channel rack. So let's say I lay down a very simple drum pattern that sounds like this inside the channel rack. And some of you may use this one pattern to lay down your melodies and 808s too. I just copied my melody and 808 pattern to this one. So now let's say you've laid down all the drums and melody in your beat and now it's time to arrange. Instead of cutting and pasting each sound to a new pattern to separate them, right click up here on the pattern name and click on split by channel. This just separated each sound into a unique pattern and you can drag them like this into your playlist and start arranging. It's a very basic trick, but very useful. Number four is one that I use in every project. When you start your project and lay down your drums, you make some decisions about your uh, drum samples and you choose certain ones that you think sound good and will work. At some point, you may want to try different snares, different hi-hats or kicks or even 808s. But you don't want to mess with the way you lay down the patterns or the way I have in the playlist. Here's how to try out different samples without losing any of them. Right now I'm using this decap kick and I'm gonna drag another kick on top of this to replace it. So now every kick in the playlist is replaced. We can listen to it, we don't like it, we do it again and again. Open your kick sample, right click on the name and you will see the history of kicks that were used on this sampler channel. 
simple as that. So if I want to go back to the decap kick, just like this, every single one is changed back to the decap kick. Again, this was very basic, but it couldn't be more useful. Trick number five is along the same lines of number four, but it's also very useful. Sometimes you end up using certain loops from your browser in the project. It could be drum loops, melody stems, or whatever. Let's say this reverse riser that I changed the name, obviously it wasn't called that. And now you want to know which pack is this from? Where is this? In the fastest way possible. All you have to do is to open the sample and click on this icon and bam. It's in Cymatics, Pyramid Effects, under Risers. A few days ago, I reached 1000 subscribers on YouTube, all thanks to you guys. And I wanted to take a few seconds to let you know how much it means to me and how much I appreciate the love and support you've shown me in the past year. I have a very cool surprise planned for you in my next video near Christmas time. This next trick is great for audio editing. As we can all agree, FL Studio is not known for its groundbreaking audio editing features. So whatever trick you learned in that area to speed up your workflow is a blessing. On your keyboard, you should have a set of Control, Shift and Alt on the left hand side and a set of Control, Alt and Shift on the right hand side. This trick only works on the right hand side. Hold Alt and Shift and click anywhere to cut a clip. Let go of Shift and hold Alt only and left click to mute that clip. This way you can quickly drag out certain parts of a loop that you don't need or remove breath or unwanted noise inside your recordings. So once again, hold Alt and Shift and left click to cut, let go of Shift and hold Alt and left click to mute and unmute a clip. Number six is a feature that's very simple in other DAWs, but in FL Studio, you need to do it this way. I have three plug instruments in this project. This guy, this guy, and this guy. What if I want to insert a MIDI pattern for all three to play at the same time, being able to tweak them together and not having to do it one by one? Click on the plus icon, go to the miscellaneous folder and open a layer plugin. Hold shift and select the plugins you want to play together. Then inside the layer plugin, click on set children. Now, if you select the layer plugin and play your notes, They're all playing together. And if you play some MIDI notes inside the layer plugin, it gets played on all three. Apart from this basic function, layer plugin offers a couple other cool things. If you turn on the random button, it will play the notes that you play randomly between each of those selected instruments. This could be a very cool trick if you're doing an EDM music and you want to play different bass one shots for different notes, or maybe just to inspire you with different crazy sounds that comes from different plugins on the same melody. Number eight is using track mode inside playlist to have a more organized project. In this project, I'm kind of doing it, but not 100% because I did this project on a live stream and it was chaos. So what is track mode? If you right click on any of the tracks in the playlist and go to track mode, you can either assign that track to an audio track or to an instrument. Let's say I open a flex plugin on this track. The track will automatically be called flex. There will be a pattern created for it with the same name and it will be routed automatically to a mixer track with the same name. That in itself is a feature we don't have in FL Studio to automatically send stuff, audio files or plugins into a mixer track. On top of that, if you create any automations for that track, whether in the mixer, channel rack, or in the plugin itself, you can see that the automations will get colored and named accordingly and also be grouped to the main instrument. So everything is tidy and you can move them together if you want to. In my production template, I have my drums, kick, snare, clap, and hats, plus my 808 sub and top already routed as track mode inside playlist and in my mixer. Everything else that I add along the way, I will make a decision whether I want to do it using track mode or not. Number nine is not only a headache saver, but it's a project saver. In the process of making this video, I added a few drum samples and audio files that I didn't use inside my playlist and in my arrangements. And along the way, while you work on a project, you probably drag in hundreds of files that you end up not using. You just right click and delete them like this and you think they're gone. Well, they're not, and they're still inside the project. They take CPU power and RAM power. Long story short, instead of going one by one, hunting for them and deleting them completely, there is one easy button that does it for you. Now, before I click this, I want you to look at down here. These four samples I just dragged in for this video, 
and when I click on purge on use audio clips, they will be removed. Just like that, anything that's not being used inside your project will get deleted completely from this project. For number 10, I had to open a blank project. As I said before, in FL Studio, there is currently no way to send your audio files or plugins directly to a mixer channel as you create them. So let's say I have these six tracks, some drums and a couple 808s that I want sent into the mixer channel. You can of course do them one by one like this, or instead, you could select all the channels that you want to send to a mixer channel, come and select the mixer channel you want to start from, and do Control, Shift, and L. Now every channel is routed to the mixer in order with the name, according to the order of the channel rack. If it's hard for you to remember the shortcut, you can also right click on the mixer channel, go to channel routing, and either route all those channels to one mixer channel, or the second option, starting from this mixer channel. And the same thing will happen. I'm gonna give you a bonus tip that you should take very seriously. Make yourself a template or find one that works. Look, if you know that every time that you're gonna start a project at some point, you will have to sidechain your kick to your bass, why not have a kick channel and a bass channel with the sidechain already set up so that you don't waste your time and energy. Try setting up things that you end up doing every time over and over in your template and improve the template gradually as you improve yourself. This is what my basic production template looks like. I have my drums and bass routed. A sidechain signal is being sent from my kick to my 808. On my 808, I have an EQ. Inside that EQ, I've routed my sidechain and all I have to do is to choose the frequency choose the amount of sidechain and I'm done. On top of that, I have my buses set up. I have six effects channels set up. Each of them are going to the effects bus. On that effects bus, I have an EQ with filters. On my master bus, I have my meter and one limiter. I also made this recording template with FL Studio stock plugins plus a couple free plugins. And I shared this template with everyone for free and you can download it too and use it. If you want to learn more about how to operate this template, I've already made a video that I really should update because it looks proper dusty. Anyways, I will link it down below and up top for you to watch if you want. FL Studio 21.1 gave us the piano roll scripting feature, which is an actual workflow cheat code. If you want to learn how to use those in your workflow, watch this video next.